How did you first meet Mr. Gorman? Well, I think I first met Greg Gorman through Divine, actually. Divine was friends with Greg Gorman before I was. And um, I met him, you know, I don't know, in L.A., certainly, when Divine was out there. And, uh, but I remember him handling Divine's death so wonderfully, really. He was, uh, when Divine died, Divine, Greg had seen him the night before. And Greg uh, had taken him home, dropped him off. Divine sang uh, Arrivederci Roma from the balcony of his hotel. Divine left him. I mean, Greg went home. The next day, Greg got the phone call that he died. And Greg called Noguchi. Was that his name? The coroner? The famous coroner in L.A. that of uh, the stars that was always in the news and got him to get somebody to get the body so they could block it before the press got pictures of him carrying the body out. Now that's a friend. So how long have you known each other? God, I've known Greg. You know, I don't remember the very first time I've met him, but Greg would know. Maybe. I don't know. I, I've known him tw 25 years at least, you know, and he's been a great, great friend, besides working with him professionally. What was your first impression of him? My first impression of Greg was somebody that knew a million celebrities but wasn't a star fucker. He could care less about it, basically. Although that was his business, so he did have to care about it. But he only liked some celebrities. He didn't like all of them. Famous was not enough. You had to be funny, you had to be unpretentious, and you had to be a loyal friend, which Greg always was. If he was going to take your picture, he made you look beautiful but real. It, it wasn't like um, he was trying to lie to anybody about how you looked. He was just giving you the benefit of a doubt. How did you become friends? I became friends through Divine, definitely. And I can't remember, I know that he took a lot of photos of Divine. One of the most famous ones with Divine, with all that, but there's really five hands holding Divine's chin back. That's what he did was so great. So I knew him through Divine completely and became friends with him uh, Completely through Divine. A lot of times it was the other way around, but Divine knew him first. And I think Greg had taken his picture, uh, maybe done his headshots. But I met a lot of great people through Greg, believe me, from David Hockney to um, Roddy McDowell to many, many great celebrities and funny celebrities that we had great times with. Why were you drawn to him as a friend or how were you drawn to their, his work? Well, I had seen Greg's work, and I knew that he took, took photos of celebrities where they look great. I mean, everybody should pray that Greg Gorman does their headshot, I mean, because he's done all of mine. And then once we became friends, he did the special stills for all the movies, like the glamour day, the last day when you had to get the poster shot. Or, or, uh, and I would say he did them from Cry Baby On, pretty much. Um, and, uh, and the stars loved it when he came because he was such a pro and he had all this equipment and lights and everything. So they always had a good time with it and felt very safe when Greg was taking their picture. I think celebrities, no matter how old they were, felt safe in his hands. But I was friends with him just because he was funny and he liked to go to crazy places and go to art galleries and go, go to bookstores that I liked to. But he also wanted to walk on the wild side. He'd go anywhere. I mean, he'd come to Baltimore and go to the scariest bars ever. I mean, he met many of his boyfriends uh, well, one of great, long one at my Christmas party. So um, Greg would come to Baltimore too, and he knew many of my friends. And such a lovely friendship he did. I mean, he took this amazing shot of my parents where they were alive, which he certainly didn't have to. And uh, it looks like them on the cover of People magazine. I mean, my mother has it hanging in her bedroom. So um, beside being a friend, he went that extra way to just think up things to do that be very loyal, good friend. That's what he does the best. He's a great friend. What did you like most about his photography? I liked his photography because sometimes he could do the standard Hollywood glamour shot, but then he did a whole book about a model called Greg that was one of the most shocking, beautifully pornographic things I ever saw in my life. So much so that Colin Deland, one of the most edgiest art dealers in New York, gave him a show of it. And so he could go either end. He could appreciate um, a porn star's beauty, a boyfriend's beauty, uh, a heterosexual male movie star's beauty. Everybody felt safe with him because he, he knew his boundaries, but at the same time, he made everybody laugh. And that's how you get people to cooperate, as I've done myself through my whole life. What is your fondest memory of him? My fondest memory of, of Greg is when things were bad, about he's somebody that would really help you, you know, when Divine died. I mean, uh, people coming to the rescue. I mean, a lot of times people say, are you their friend? And you say, well, I wouldn't call him if I broke up with somebody. Greg, I would. Uh, Greg knows everything about my life. He's a real friend, not a business friend at all. 
How would you describe him as a person? Greg is a loyal friend. He's funny. He can get along with all kinds of people. You can take him to a mafia bar. You can take him to a transvestite bar. Well, they're not called that anymore. Yeah, they can take you to a gay bar, a hillbilly bar, a biker bar, and Greg can get along with everybody. Um, he is widespread. He crosses over every barrier of being able to get along with people without ever saying he isn't anybody but who he completely is in real life. How did he influence you or others? Greg influenced me by, in a way, of, of saying that the Hollywood system can be good. And uh, when I had a few movies that I guess were Hollywood movies, um, and I had to be in L.A. for a long time, Greg was the greatest friend to hang out with because he knew those, he could go to those restaurants, he could play the Hollywood game at the same time, but then come home and laugh about it. He, he, he did it because that's how he made his living, but at the same time, he saw the ludicrousness of it. He, he didn't take himself so seriously that he couldn't joke about it. Um, he didn't constantly talk about his journey and his craft, something that some people in L.A. do. That, they do it in New York. They do it everywhere, where they, suddenly it's a sign that they're, they have no sense of humor left. We're not curing cancer. We're in the entertainment business. But humor can help with diseases. I, God knows. What are Greg's best qualities? Greg's best qualities, as I've said over and over, is loyalty. Uh, I think Greg would kill for you. He would kill somebody if he had to for you. And uh, that's important in Hollywood, where people turn their back or are always looking over your shoulder to see who's the next famous person. That's the opposite of Greg. But yet he functions in a world that is completely that world. And that's why I think he's lasted so long in that world and branched out to learn all of the new kind of photography, teach it all over the world, travel, have shows all over the world. Uh, he had a show in Siberia recently. I don't know anybody else that did, really. I'm impressed by that. Who were the cutest boys in Siberia? I bet Greg took their photograph. Do you have any stories you want to share about Greg? Well, there's only so many I can say in public. Uh, certainly, I, I think whenever I go to LA, I, I, the first person I see is Greg. Um, sometimes I stay in his house. Um, every week, Greg and I are the odd couple for Oscar week, and I go to L.A., and uh, we go to every event. And I think people think we're like La Caja Fole, like some old couple or something, because they only see us that week, and we're always together at every event, which is kind of funny. And we do bicker like an old married couple sometimes when we're out, because I won't go in his convertible. I say, no, I'm 66. I'm not riding around L.A. in a convertible, which makes him crazy. And I'm also not a wine buff, and he's a major wine buff. And I always say, oh, it tastes like vinegar from a witch's asshole, just to drive him crazy. <laughs> but so we argue all the time. And he, some of the art I like, he goes, oh, God, he hates it. But so that's why we get along so well, because we don't agree on everything, and we, and we, we know each other's taste very well and respect it, though. What about Greg makes you smile? What makes Greg, everything about Greg makes me smile because he's funny and he's got a sense of humor and he can make fun of himself first and uh, so can I. And that's the basis for anybody to have a good sense of humor and ever be able to make fun of everybody else if you can make fun of yourself first. And Greg does that. But um, I like him because um, you can just go anywhere with him. You don't have to worry. You can go, I like to go down to what used to be called Ben Frank's Coffee Shop. We would go there every morning. I don't know what it's called now, something different. But um, Greg and I would go to low life places in LA, to hustler bars and shit, and have a great time. But at the same time, during Oscar week, we go to very fancy parties and everything, and Greg's the perfect date. Did he ever teach you anything? What did you learn from him? What I learned from Greg about how to get along in Hollywood in a way and how um, and and how to well to deal with movie stars he's really good at it and I wasn't bad at it either because I always had to talk movie stars into taking a chance and come to Baltimore all they had to do was look good under Greg's light you know it's much harder <laughs> to uh, but Greg um, made them feel at ease I think and and got along with all types so I learned from him really how to negotiate in Hollywood which I think he's he's good at even though he spends much of his time not in Hollywood anymore anything you admire about him oh I admire everything about Greg you know I, I admire that his almost reckless embracing of new people. 
Um, and I think he does that amazingly. And it's amazing how open he is to meet new people. And, um, and stick up for them. If he's your friend, believe me, don't ever talk badly about somebody in front of Greg because he'll, he'll put you right down. Now, we have a big dinner party every year. Well, Greg has it. It's his house. And he's a great, amazing cook, by the way, too. But every year we have it. And it's our celebrity party. And we have a great time at it. But at the same time, I've had people, I've met people that are friends of Greg's that are ex-convicts that I like just as much that I'm still friends with. Greg can go everywhere and meet good people. What photograph or photographs would you say are his most memorable and why? Well, in my personal life, the picture of my mustache became really, really popular. It's constantly revived. There's a postcard of it. Uh, I, I think he captured it. I always said, who's going to ever kiss me after looking at that? It looks like open heart surgery. But um, at the same time, it's, it's a great shot for me. Um, all my headshots that he's taken of me, I'm very, very fond of. Of pictures that he took, I love the ad campaign that he did for... Um, uh, the Eyeglass Place, LA Eyeworks, which was the whole book of it, which is amazing. How many people, commercials even end up in art galleries? Um, I guess that, that book, Greg and I, was the most shocking to me, the most memorable. But yet, pictures of Johnny Depp, Patricia Hearst, he did a beautiful photograph of her right in the beginning. Uh, of Hatchet Face, the Kim McGuire that he worked, uh, that was in Crybaby, he did her. So um, I have every one of his books. You know, I, I've never not had one of his books. And it's amazing to look through all the photographs and see how he can be dead serious, sense of humor, be funny, be shocking, be everything, but they're still all beautiful. Every photograph by itself is a beautiful photograph. If you feel you can answer this, why is Greg's work so important in the canon of photography? Well, Greg's work is important because it can go to extremes. Um, mostly people photograph one thing and they do one work and it's uh, instantly identifiable. Greg's work can be instantly identifiable, but it might be the sh shot of a beautiful movie star or an asshole, actually. And they're both beautiful. Greg can photograph assholes as well as he can photograph Academy Award winners. I wonder if that shot will get in. <laughs> well, Greg, I miss you. I haven't seen you in about four months. Usually we travel both together in different places all over the world. A lot of times we overlap on cities and get together. So I can't wait to see you next time in, uh, I'm in L.A., maybe visiting my friend in prison. Or I see you in New York when we're both working. Or, uh, but what I especially look forward is our annual Oscar week, our bromance. I love you, Greg.